Hello everyone. This is Hound Dog flying with you in another historical aircraft from the past 100 years of U.S. Navy carrier aviation. Today is January 18, 1911 and we will be flying the Curtis Model D Pusher from the Alameda Naval Air Station for an arrested landing and launch on the USS Langley CV-1. Let's start the engine and conduct a brief walk around and overview of the Curtis Model D Pusher. Clear. Radio check. One, two, three, three, two, one. Radio check. The Curtis Model D was a biplane with 20 inch tricycle wheel landing gear manufactured by the Curtis Airplane Company of Hammondsport, New York. It was approximately 30 feet long with a wingspan of 38 feet and a maximum takeoff weight of 1,300 pounds. The power was initially from a Curtis four-cylinder water-cooled engine rated at 40 horsepower for a maximum speed of 50 miles per hour. The construction was primarily of spruce and ash with rubberized silk cloth stretched over the top of the wing. This was the same cloth used in the construction of dirigible balloons. Later models added cloth covering over the bottom of the wing for improved airfoil efficiency. The forward bamboo outrigger supported the twin canard elevators and the rear bamboo outrigger supported the rudder and horizontal stabilizer. The initial aileron design was trailing edge ailerons but later changed to inner wing mounted locations. A rocking metal framework shoulder cradle was mounted to the seat and required the pilot to lean into the turn to operate the ailerons. This configuration seemed logical to Glenn Curtis, who was a former motorcycle racing champion. Later, an elevator was incorporated into the tail boom, eliminating the need for the forward canard resulting in what became known as the Curtis Headless Pusher. The Curtis Model D was the first aircraft to take off and land on a ship. On November 14, 1910, Eugene Eli, a civilian pilot employed by Glenn Curtis, made the first unassisted takeoff from an elevated wood deck constructed over the bow of the light cruiser USS Birmingham while anchored at Hampton Roads, Virginia. He was forced to land on a nearby beach due to the severe vibrations caused when the propeller was damaged striking the water. Two months later, on the morning of January 18, 1911, Eli took off from the Selfridge Field in San Francisco, California. He flew over the bay and made the first shipboard landing on the temporary wooden decking the anchored cruiser USS Pennsylvania. After enjoying an onboard luncheon in his honor, Eli turned his aircraft around and successfully launched for an uneventful return flight to Selfridge Field. Unfortunately, nine months later, on October 19, 1911, Eli died in a crash while flying at an exhibition in Macon, Georgia. Eli was formally recognized for his seminal contributions to naval aviation in 1933 when the Navy posthumously awarded him the Distinguished Flying Cross.